A while back I was in my own therapy and I just come out of a relationship and I went into session one day and I said to my therapist, help me, <laughs> I feel so stuck. I don't get it, I just came out of this relationship and it was one more that ended, you know? I feel like I kind of understand that I'm attracted to the kinds of people that I am for a reason so I can trust in that and go with it. I believe I have some pretty good tools to know how to communicate and work through a relationship in you know, a healthy way, but I keep coming up with the same result, so I don't know what to do. Do I just resign myself to not having the kind of relationship that I would really like that can be more fulfilling for me? Should I settle? Do I just not have a relationship at all? Neither of those sound very appealing to me, but I just don't know what to do. And my therapist turned to me and said, you know, relationships can be a really great place for us to be able to do a lot of that work, but we have to be able to start here first. That's why you're here. That's why you're here in this therapy. It's an opportunity for us to get down deep and be able to explore some of that emotional muck so that we can treat that, we can heal that internally, and that's what will set you up for a more successful relationship with somebody else. It kind of made me think actually a bit about my grad school experience because in that there were two main parts of it. There was the coursework that I did, which was just helping me learn and understand about the theories behind working with people and, and what approaches we can take. And then there was the application of that in an internship, how I can actually work with somebody and have those therapeutic relationships so I can learn and grow in that way too. Had I just started working directly with people, not having the understanding about the theories behind it, I would have been flip-flopping all over the place. It would not have been good. You would not want to come to me for therapy at that point because I wouldn't know exactly what strategies to take or where to go from it. You know, it would have been a bit messy. It wouldn't have been really great work that I could have done. So to be able to have that framework within myself first was what set me up for better work that I could do and more successful relationships that I could have working with people in therapy. I'm still gonna learn a whole lot and grow a whole lot as a therapist, but I'm just starting from a better point. In the last video, I was talking about how we all basically have emotional wounds, about how that comes from our childhoods when we believe that in some way we were neglected from our main caregivers and how that creates these irrational negative beliefs about ourselves and about our worth. It's those wounds that keep us from being able to do more work for ourselves. It keeps us from investing into ourselves in a more meaningful way. Because if on some level we're struggling to really recognize our own inherent value, then we're not going to exert our energies outside of ourselves into things that we really care about because we're not gonna think that it's worth our time and our energy. You know, we're gonna think that we're probably gonna fail at it, so why do it all? Why put ourselves out there and take that risk? We close that down, but when we avoid that, we are actually avoiding investing into ourselves in a more meaningful way and investing into self-love. As gay men, we grow up in homophobic society that marginalizes us and creates these very negative and irrational beliefs about ourselves and about our worth. That somehow we're broken, there's something wrong with us, we're deficient and inadequate, that we won't measure up. So it makes it that much bigger of a risk to put ourselves out there and do things that we would care about because we're so afraid that we're not going to do it well. We're going to totally flounder and mess it all up and fail and everybody's going to really see what's wrong with us then. Everybody's going to see what is damaged about who we are. So it feels like such a risk that we shut that down. And when we shut that down, then we keep those wounds really fresh and we keep that pain alive within us, and then we're not investing into self-love. When we have all of this awareness, then we can actually put insight into action. We can now take what we know and understand where that fear comes from, understand how there's been this barrier for us doing more of what we would like to do, things that could actually be of interest to us and create a spark within us, and we can just forge ahead and do it. We can challenge ourselves to put ourselves out there and just experiment with things that we might really resonate with. We probably don't know what our really great big passion is in life or our overwhelming joys are in life, but that's okay. As long as we're putting ourselves out there, that's already a great starting point. It's kind of like ideally a parent 
will help their child get into all kinds of activities to play and see what kinds of things they connect to and what kinds of things stick. So maybe like putting them in gymnastics or Little League or Cub Scouts or piano lessons or anything like that to actually just see what can work. We can do the same thing for ourselves. We can reparent ourselves and just let ourselves play. When we're able to invest into ourselves in this way, that's what creates a more authentic relationship with ourselves. And when we have that more authentic relationship with ourselves, then we set ourselves up to be able to connect with other people in more authentic and meaningful ways and just helps us have more of the exciting relationship and the fulfilling relationship that we would really like.